Lailatul Qadri Khairum Min Alf Shah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My brothers and sisters Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Islam has given great importance to the gathering of people You take a look at the five daily prayers Men should be fulfilling these daily prayers, not themselves, but rather in congregation. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says Salah in congregation is 27 times better than Salah that you fulfill on your own. And here Salah referring to the five daily prayers. Similarly, once a week you have to go to the masjid. It's called Jumu'ah. The Jumu'ah is connected to the gathering. Jama'ah also means a group. And Jumu'ah here means Friday, and it also means the gathering of the people in the masjid in order to fulfill what Allah has ordained. On that Friday, you will notice the Dhuhr prayer, the midday prayer, is actually reduced to two units, and they are called the Jumu'ah prayer. And then there is, prior to that, a lecture that is delivered by the Imam. He needs to get up and praise Allah. He needs to declare the greatness of Allah, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and advise the congregation with at least a verse of the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Then he prays for the leaders and the ummah, and then he ends his sermon or lecture. He should be keeping it short and sweet, to the point with a powerful message, and then he goes into the prayer. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has forbidden us from skipping the Jumu'ah without a valid reason. Now, this is the amount of importance that is given only to the issue of prayer. One of the main reasons that this is done is to keep the Ummah together. The Prophet wasallam says that Allah Almighty's help is always with those who are in the group. And another narration says, shaitan might tamper with a person who is singular, meaning on your own. The minute you are two, shaitan is further away. And the greater the number, the further shaitan will be. So when you're traveling, if you were to travel with a companion, with someone that probably would give you some company, it would be better for you. We have knowledge of the requirements and the needs of the people within the community that we would only know about if we interacted. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, the person who interacts with others and bears patience regarding their negativity, to a degree, obviously, is better than the one who does not interact with people and does not bear patience regarding the harm that might come from them. So that clearly shows you if you are a stronger person and you want a greater reward, you will still interact with people and you bear patience regarding the harm that might come from them. Yasbiru ala adhahum, one who is patient, uh, uh, who is patient regarding the harm from them. Why would the Prophet, peace be upon him, tell us that it's better to interact and bear patience than not to interact at all? because you will not be able to fulfill some of the pillars of Islam unless you interact with people. Take a look at the Hajj. You cannot do it alone. There will be millions of others. You are going to have to, whether you like it or not, be in Mina and Arafah and Muzdalifa at the same time as millions of others. So to be considerate, to actually reach out to them, to be able to respect them and fulfill their rights and to be able to be a part of this huge team is what is of essence. Similarly, your five daily prayers, like we just said, you won't be able to fulfill them correctly except in a group, especially the men folk. And then you have zakat, which is the charity. How are you going to know legitimate causes when you haven't interacted with people? You don't know who is unwell. How are you going to visit the sick and ill? You don't know those in need. How are you going to pray for them to begin with? And secondly, able to reach out to them when you don't even know. 
So when you interact, you greet, you find out how are you going to be able to congratulate people regarding the goodness that has happened within their lives. You won't be able to do it unless you have a group of friends, a group of acquaintances, and then a group of people who are part of the ummah, whom you might not know so well, but you owe them certain things. What do you owe them? You owe them a greeting to begin with, with a good expression. When you're greeting someone, you must make sure that the expression on your face is good. Similarly, you owe them that if they were to sneeze and say, Alhamdulillah, you need to say, Yarhamukallah. We are taught as Muslims that when you sneeze, you say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah because Allah has just saved you from sickness. Sneezing is something amazing. It's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the person says, Alhamdulillah, you say, Yarhamukallah, may Allah have mercy on you. And in return, they will offer another dua for you. Yahdikumullahu wa yuslihu balakum. May Allah guide you and may Allah... Uh, make good your affairs. Similarly, when a person passes away, the amount of reward that is given just to be there in order to offer prayers upon that person and, and to ask Allah to forgive them is tremendous. The hadith speaks about one whole qirat, one entire mountain of reward just to pray for a person after they've passed on in terms of Janazah prayer. Then if you were to follow that janazah or the body and help carry it and help get it to the graveyard and help lower it and help cover the grave with soil and so on the way it's supposed to be done, you get another qirat, which means you get another mountain of reward. Why would this be? Again, because Allah wants you to interact. The community is given so much of importance in Islam. You must find out what is going on with your brothers and sisters in order to help them. Not in order to gossip, not in order to create issues, but in order to help them, in order to be there for them. And this is what makes it meaningful to live. Ask those who have no community. Ask those who have no one to check up on them. How does it feel? Imagine if one person were to phone you, my brother, I didn't see you for the last two days. I hope you're okay. Hope everything is fine. You would feel good, mashallah. I'm praying for you. And if there is anything I can do, please let me know. Now, when people tell that to us, please don't take advantage in a wrong way when they've said this to us, but rather we can ask them if there is something we want, something we need, also based on how close you are to them. Sometimes you may not be so close to someone and you might not be comfortable asking them more than a certain amount. But who knows? May Allah Almighty help us. The orphans, the widows and so many more within community and society, the Prophet peace be upon him has given such a great glad tidings to those who take care of them that he says, a person who spends his time taking care of orphans and widows is equivalent to the one who stands in prayer all night, every night, and fasts for the sake of Allah all day, every day. Again, why would that reward be there? Those are the vulnerable in society. Those are the ones who are needy in society. Have you spent time serving them, giving them food and drink, meeting their needs? and only wanting the pleasure of Allah in return. If that is the case, good news, reward. Massive reward for you. I told you what it is. And Allah multiplies that reward when it comes to a season like Ramadan. So the masjid has been given so much of importance. Take a look at the month of Ramadan is also a month of the masjid because it's the house of Allah. You will notice people flock to the masjid much more in the month of Ramadan than in other months. I've never actually heard people call it the month of the masjid, but I'm saying it's the month of the masjid because it definitely is. There, there is much more prayer that we offer during this particular month. It's the month of the Quran. It's the month of fasting. It's the month of charity and so much more. So my brothers and sisters, when we go to the house of Allah, something very important we've been taught to be dressed in the best of our clothing or at least presentable in a neat way. That's an injunction in the Quran. Ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum in the kulli masjid. O children of Adam, make sure that you adorn yourself correctly when it comes to 
visiting the houses of Allah or at the houses of Allah, then we need to make sure we're smelling good. If you've eaten onions or garlic, then you are taught to rinse your mouth thoroughly before you go to the masjid. The same would apply if we have been smoking cigarettes or if there is a foul smell coming from us, perspiration, whatever else it may be. Make sure you've washed yourself. Make sure you do not harm those who are standing with you because the hadith says the angels are also harmed by something that general human beings would be harmed by. We would like to enter the masjid, smile at people, greet them, worship Allah Almighty, ask the people a few beautiful questions of how they are and what's going on and so on. And then we will disperse and we will meet again at the next prayer. This is something that is a gift for the believers, the community. We are a family. We are part of one humongous family and we should be caring for each other. Al-mu'minuna kal bunyan. The believers are like a building, you know, all the bricks are one interlocked in the other. Similarly, the hadith says a believer for another believer is like one body. If a part of it is in pain, the entire body will be in pain, will have fever and insomnia. So if you are a true believer, you should be in pain when anyone else is in pain and try and reach out to them. For this reason, we should never become excited upon the loss of another. You hear that someone has suffered a loss, even if it's your enemy. The minimum is don't become excited about it. Pray to Allah to protect you. Thank Allah that you have not suffered in that way. And guess what? No matter who it is, are you going to reach out to them? That is the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's really a very noble teaching. Sometimes when there is a natural disaster, and there have been quite a few lately, you find people forget the barriers that they had put up and they start caring for each other in the moment because they know that this has affected all of us. In a similar fashion, we remember the day of judgment. We will all be in the need of the mercy of Allah. And this is how we will achieve it. May Allah have mercy on us. أقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر.